There's an amazing world behind the stacks, computers, and study rooms at the University of Maryland Baltimore County Library. In addition to a comprehensive library to support the work of UMBC students, faculty, and researchers, the university has some amazing special collections. I'm with Tom Beck, Chief Curator of the Alvin O. Kuhn Library at UMBC. Tom, good to have you here. Delighted to be here. And I'm going to ask you a really basic question. What constitutes a special collection? What does that mean? A special collection could be a variety of things, but most particularly it's rare, valuable, whole collections of things, um, things that are used in the research enterprise. And you have a lot of these special collections at your library. We do. I could spend <laughs> hours listing them for you. Okay, well, we're going to take a few <laughs> minutes at least. But let, let's, let, let's talk a little bit about some of the unique collections. If you had to really focus on some of them, what would they be? Well, we have uh, 2.1 million photographs, a library of 40,000 books devoted to photography. Wow. We have a, a Marylandia collection. Uh, the Joseph L. Ar Arnold Maryland Collection. We have a science fi one of the major science fiction collections in the, in the U.S. Oh, do you really? And uh -huh. a general rare book collection. Our earliest book is from 1484. And do you know how many are in that, that rare book collection? Oh, probably so. about uh, 20,000, 30,000 volumes. Wow, <laughs> that's a lot. So how do you come into possession of all of this material in these collections? Each in different ways. Uh, I can give you an example. Okay. Um, our Mildred Grossman collection. Mildred Grossman was a teacher in New York City and she belonged to a, a social-minded photography group. We did an exhibition of one of her former colleagues from the, uh, the group and uh, when he spoke with uh, Mildred's widower, uh, he recommended that, that her collection should be put at UMBC and, and so we acquired it. Oh, how interesting. In that collection are photographs of the Little Rock Nine, the pioneering students who integrated Little Rock High School at the time of uh, Brown versus Board of Education. Oh my heavens! So it's a wonderful insight into our history, social, our social history, our yes, political indeed. history. Yeah. Okay. Um, photographs tell so much um, about you know about a people and about an era, and um, so I know that you have some photos that you've brought with you today. Uh, a collection by DB. Uh, Bowser. So they're, they're photographs of, of paintings. I should, should um, clarify that. They come from a, an album, a family album, which includes a portrait of him, but also uh, works, uh, photographs of his, of his painted works. Um, he was a portrait painter. Uh, he studied with a student of Thomas Sully, the noted Philadelphia painter. Mm -hmm. And uh, he learned how to uh, do portraiture in a very fine manner in the tradition of the British style. But most importantly, he was commissioned to make Civil War battle flags for U.S. colored troops. And there's a whole range of them that with lots of symbolism and meaning to them. Yeah, they're, they're beautiful, but as you said, have a very strong message. What about the peculiar institution? Tell me a little bit about that. Well, that's a different kind of image, uh, not made by Bowser. Yeah. The one that we have is uh, made by Charles Seaver, a photographer in Boston, but it was copied from one, uh, an image made in Louisiana of a man, a uh, former slave, or a slave at that time, 1863, uh, and he had committed some trifling mis, you know, step for the family that owned him, and uh, he was whipped <gasps> mercilessly with oh. these humongous uh, uh, scars on his back is what the photograph shows, mm. and it was uh, it's a it's a, a stirring and emotional image even to this moment. But uh, it was so so much so at the time that it was made that it was copied and circulated uh, to raise awareness for abolitionists, but also after the war, after the Civil War, to raise money to educate former okay. slaves. Now we have just a little time left, so I want to make sure that we get to two photographs that I know that you've brought in. Uh, tell me about Hiram Revels. We have a portrait of him. Hiram Level Revels was uh, uh, a North Carolina-born fellow, freeborn man in uh, the 1830s, and he uh, went to Mississippi where he went into politics and became the first uh, elected mem African American member of the United States Senate. Wow. And we can't go into it today, yeah. but he also has a Baltimore connection, so we'll, 
Well, you'll have to go to the collection to learn out more. And quickly, Roland Freeman, if you could. Roland Freeman is a Balt is a Balt was a Baltimorean. Uh, he lives in Washington D.C. Yeah. now, but he was a photographer. Uh, who after his military service uh, went into working for a newspaper in Capitol Hill and from there launched a career. But he came back to his roots in Baltimore and he did a whole portfolio devoted to Baltimore, including a portrait of Mrs. Brown, a charming image, and a rabbers on Gay Street in Baltimore. There you go. All right, so f folks can take a look at these collections online, come into the library as well? Yes. Correct? All right. Well, this is fascinating. I wish we had the whole program we could <laughs> dedicate to this. Thank you so much, Tom, for being here. You're welcome. Delighted. This is just a taste of what's there, as we said. So you're invited to explore the UMBC Special Collections at the Canvas Gallery in person, or as Tom was saying, you can go online. You're watching Smarts, the Baltimore County Arts and Culture Show.